Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm down here in LA at the workshop of Mike Hill. Mike, it's a pleasure to be here. We've talked about your art actually on the podcast with Adam before, and mm -hmm. we've, we've seen photos of your work, and it's gorgeous. And I wanted to pick your brain about sculpting the work you do and the full body sculptures that you do. Cool. Can you tell me a little bit about your work in general for people who don't know and, and what type of work you do? Well, I'm a portrait sculptor foremost, but I deal with uh, hyperrealism. And my um, forte, my love, is for the classic universal monsters and classic characters. So, you know, I like to remake these guys from the old movies so that I always like to say it's like, I want people to feel like they're meeting an old friend for the first time. Wow. And feel like what it, what it could have been like to see Karloff in makeup, what it could have been like to see Long Chain as the Wolfman, which of course we'll never get to do. So. Right second best. So in terms of portraiture, you've done portraits of people who are still alive, portraits mm -hmm. of people who've passed, or in their youth, yes. for example, and all goes in terms of reference. So you do mm -hmm. silicone-based sculptures, like for uh -huh. example, this beautiful, beautiful Oliver Reed here mm -hmm. from Gladiator. That is his likeness from 1999. Is it all just photo-based? Like yeah, that's just photographs that I, that I had of uh, Oliver. I'm a real big fan of Oliver Reed. He's like my favorite actor, always has been. And I was becoming friends with him before he died. I'm friends with his family. And um, so, uh, you know, I really loved him in, as Proxima, which would have been his, his kung fu role, you know, his, his big breakthrough mm -hmm. back into stardom would have been, you know, in Gladiator. And unfortunately, he passed away during filming. So I wanted to homage him. This is the actual turban he wore in the movie. That's the original oh, wow. turban. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine, Russ, gave that to me as a gift. After, and um, and I, what, what's really cool is Oliver Reed's first starring lead role in 1960 was The Curse of the Werewolf, which again is my favorite character of all time. That werewolf is my favorite. It, he's responsible for what I do is seeing this movie as a four-year-old. So um, what we've got here is a wolf I'm, I'm working on, uh, Ollie from 1960, which he'll, the full final figure will look a lot like this. This is a smaller kit I did many, many years ago. So what's really nice is Ollie in his first starring role and Ollie sadly in his last role, but Oh my gosh, um, that's beautiful. That there are two things here that are new to us because we, mm -hmm. we've interviewed you know, sculptors and makers of masks and prosthetics and stuff. One is like we've seen wax sculptures of likenesses, you know, in museums, mm -hmm. and things, but you're doing a silicon sculpture. So mm -hmm. what's the difference when you're doing trying to capture a likeness from a particular moment as opposed to when someone like Frank that we know, Frank Abelito, who's mm -hmm. doing a mask someone's going to wear? Well, I, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's still portraiture, both sides, a mask or you know, or a sculpture like this. I mean, the major difference is with a mask, the life is when you put that mask on and have the eyes. The trick with these sculptures is to try to give these life to some of this inanimate, mm -hmm. you know? Also with a mask, you've got a human form under there already that you're gonna exaggerate and work upon. With portrait sculpture, usually, you know, you're starting from the inside out. And you said it's all about the eyes. It's about the, that intentionality, what, what that character yeah. is thinking. There's little tricks that you don't even realize you do. It's just that tiny turn of the head, that little twist, because I always think that, you know, if you're going to do a, a portrait of somebody, a sculpture, a full figure, in, a, in the moment, don't do the moment before or the moment after. Do the in-between, because that's when a photograph, when it looks real, when someone is just actually mid-sentence. Yeah, a little mid, yeah, exactly, candid, mid-sentence, not posed and not, you know, a studio photograph, just like you caught them in the moment when they wasn't expecting it. That's what I try to do. In terms of your process, uh, you start off with clay-based sculpture? 90% of the time, I'll just I'll get a steel armature, I'll wrap that in a bit of chicken wire, and just start putting the clay. It's normally, normally wed clay, which is a water-based clay. Um, a lot of people don't like to use it. They usually go with Chavant, which this, this one's Chavant. It's only because I did a clay pour from my original Oliver Reed I already did. I had mm. to use Chavant because I could melt it down. It's oil-based. And... That's correct, yeah. But um, I prefer the wed clay, the water-based. The only disadvantage is it does dry out. You've got to keep on top of that, you know. But mm. you become used to, you know, uh, how to use it. You know that when a certain stage is going to become leathery, that's the best time to texture. So it really is about doing it enough times to, to find that. You can't really teach that. You've got to feel the clay and know when that's happening. Right. So yeah. in the lifespan of the, the work time of that mm -hmm. clay, is when you, that's determines when you add the details. Correct. And, and then some of it's sculptural details, and then you know, based on your experience, what you're going to add later in, in the paint. Mm -hmm. and yes. The detailing. And then, you do so like, like hair too, so the application of hair mm -hmm. for this, uh, how, how do you go about that? Well, it's simple as you take a, a needle, you cut it in half, so you got half the eye of the needle, and you use it like a prong, you just push each hair in one at a time, you know, or two at a time, whichever it entails. Wow, how mm -hmm. long does something like that, a beard, take to, uh, to apply? A beard should only take a day and a half, you know, something like that, this, this goatee, you know. And this wasn't actually punched by me, this hair on this one, I was in England at the time, uh, um, so. 
I, I cannot say exactly how, much, how long it took. Right. And how much it cost, but how much it took, you know? Um, and then the other thing that's new to us is you also do full body mm -hmm. full sculptures. And yes. this, the werewolf is going to be a full body. We've seen like your Ray Harryhausen. What do you do in terms of the, how do you sculpt a full body and then cast it and also make it silicone? Well, on this one, I actually had an assistant, Ian, Ian Cromer, on this one. And what we did, we took a friend of ours named Matt and we did a brush up silicone of his body. Like a, a life cast? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then um, we clay pressed into that and then we popped it out. And then of course, Matt is only 6'2", six, 6'3", six, but I wanted him like 6'8", so we had to chop and pull and stretch and move all the limbs. Mm. So um, by the time we'd done all of that, we actually looked at each other and said, we, we, you know, maybe we should have just done this from scratch in the first place. <laughs> it was that much cutting and sawing and screwing around, you know, but it was a lesson learned, so. So sometimes yeah. it is complete from scratch, the full body. Oh and, yes, and oh yes. you're yeah, sculpting yeah. just as you would a head, but yeah. the body. Do you pay the same amount of detail, attention to detail to all oh, the Oh, absolutely, yeah, you know, as much as you can. And again, uh, you know, what you can do is, and I think you touched on it earlier, is, you know, you gotta look ahead. You gotta say, I don't have to sculpt all of this in because I'm gonna be painting this later. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the human face. What I've noticed when the advice I give to other sculptors when they sculpt in, for instance, the classic Universal Monsters, is they try and sculpt the color. You know, they're sculpting too much, they're putting too much into it. And it's better to know, okay, I'll stop here because I know the color and the shadows is gonna make that depth. I don't have to try and get that in the sculpture. I don't have to over sculpt because it's, it's easy to over sculpt. You know, right. But if you look at a life mask of somebody, it's very rounded, soft surfaces. It's not over sculpted because our skin does that, our color does that later. And then to make these things look lifelike in terms of the finishing of the painting, for example, this Frankenstein's monster, you have nails going in here. There's, you're fabricating hardware mm -hmm. on this and, and the finishing of that, like this leg brace, mm -hmm. is, this, is this metal? That's just made from plastic. And then for the rust, we just use cinnamon. Super glued cinnamon, cinnamon and that yeah. looks like rust. It looks yeah. so good. Yeah, it looks nice, right? Now, for, for portraits, you have photo references. Mm -hmm. For physical bodies, other like physical photo references. Is, Whatever you know, I can so find use... online, I'll look at, mm. you know, you know, cut. But, you know, we've all got our own body as well, so we'll all take yeah. our shirts off and have a look at what's going on there. But also, you know, I look at anatomy books, of course, and I looked at a few corpses. I actually consulted with a surgeon to see where these stitches would run, where Frank mm -hmm. Dr. Frankenstein may have opened this poor guy up to get in there, you know. I mean, it's make-believe, but you've <laughs> got to try and make it. What you try to do, you want the audience, the voyeur, to see Frankenstein's monster dead. Whereas what I see, it's very difficult, because I still see a bag of clay, even right. now. So it's nice when people react to it, because you think, okay, it works. Because it's very hard for me to see that. I, the, I, the magic, because yeah. you're thinking about processes, mm -hmm. right? You take for granted some of that magic that people, when we look at this, I look at this, and it looks so lifelike. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. In, in a dead creature form. Yeah. For the, uh, the models you have setting up, is there armature on the inside as well? Yeah, so they normally foam with a, with a wire out, steel armature in there, and usually glassed around so in case they fall, they're pretty solid, you know? Because mm -hmm. it, you're trying to make it lightweight, but also make it solid. Right, you know? right. And, and for someone starting out, like how did you get started? sculpting full figures and for if someone wants to you know go from sculpting portraits and faces to full figures where would you tell them to go and how how should they begin i would just say you've got to study anatomy i mean a, a lot of the problems are, dare i say problems with other people some of other people's work i see is they're very very static the bodies they're very mechanical you know they stood like you know mm -hmm. like a posable dummy and you've just got to make sure everything's fluid and everything flows like water that's the way to do it because even the layman can spot if a body's off you know, and again, you really have to train yourself because you become so immune to it while you're doing it, you don't see it. You, you, as well as not seeing you did a good job, you also don't see your mistakes for the longest time. And when you do, it's too late, you know. What are some of your favorite works that you've done, especially um, proud of? I think the one that people normally associate with is the Boris Karloff in the makeup chair. This British gentleman dressed up as a monster drinking tea, you know, in between takes. It was a nice idea. And we actually went out and tracked down the yeah. copy of the original chair that he sat him into mm -hmm. exact from a vintage chair. I really like that one. I like the Harry Harryhausen piece I did recently. There's something cool about doing older people. It's a lot easier. It's like, it's easier doing a man than a woman. It's easier doing a woman than a child. Because all the subtleties is, is, is harder to do. The softer someone's face is, that is. As soon as you get old and you get aged, that is a lot to play with. Thank you so much, Mike, for inviting us into your workshop and, Anytime. and showing us some of your amazing work. Check out the website, the links below. And I'm Norm from Tested. We'll have more amazing stuff, makers like Mike, sculptors, fantastic things untested. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.